Hi, and welcome to my new series that I'm going to be starting for you guys. This is going to be the first episode. Uh, back in the summer, I made a video called Fairies and the Missing 411. And uh, so if you're unfamiliar with Missing 411 cases, it basically just means missing information. Um, there's a lot of things that thread these together. Um, and you can go back and check that video for, like, full information. I kind of, like, break down all the, like similarities between cases that get them kind of classified as that. Um, but yeah, so for this series, I'm going to be breaking down um, a story each episode that in particular caught my attention as fae-like. <laughs> and yes, fairies are technically something that is really only from Celtic folklore, but um, at least the word itself I'm using the term fairies as more of an umbrella term for like it, pretty much any culture around the world has stories of these other kinds of beings, right? They just have different cultural descriptions and things like that. Um, and maybe these beings are different depending on where in the world you are. Who knows, right? This is There's so much to talk about with this. But I just wanted to make that clear. I'm not specifically just talking about Celtic fairies. Um... Yeah, so I think that's pretty much all the preamble needed. Let's dive into today's story. I can't wait. On September 19th, 2004, Robert Springfield and his two teenage sons went on a hunting trip together to the Black Canyon region of the Bighorn Mountains in Montana. Um, for those who are unaware, this is a Native American land. It's a Crow res Reservation, actually. Um, and Robert and his sons were members of the reservation. Um, something else that's important to note here. So Robert was 49 years old. He was an ex-Marine, and he was special ops when he was a Marine. So this is a man who knows how to take care of himself. He was also very, very good at handling himself in nature and unpredictable situations. Um, and he had taught this to his sons as well. So they were all very competent individuals. Now their plan when they got to the canyon was that the sons were going to separate uh, from their father temporarily. They were going to try to kind of chase or herd an elk down through the canyon towards where their father was with his bow and arrow and uh, their father was going to shoot the elk and that was their plan. Uh, however, the sons hung out there all day um, and for whatever reason there just were no elk around, whatever the case may be, and so they gave up and went back to the meeting spot where they were supposed to meet up with their father. Um, but Robert wasn't there. So they weren't really alarmed by this. This wasn't that big of a deal to them. Um, like I said, their father was a, knew how to take care of himself. You know, he was an ex-Marine. He was an experienced hunter. So they weren't really worried about it. Um, they did kind of poke around and look for him. They kind of hung out in the basic area and waited. Um, you know, called out, nothing. By the time sunset came around... They had kind of gotten to the point where it's like, well, wherever dad ended up, you know, he's probably just going to have to camp out here for the night. They still weren't really worried about it, but um, after they left and got back towards uh, towards civilization, um, they did let the authorities know, like, well, our dad is out there somewhere. We don't really know where. While the sons weren't really worried about it, the authorities went ahead and launched a search. During the search that night, they used thermal imaging to try to pick up a heat signature. So even from far away, they should have theoretically been able to see him, but they found no trace. Uh, again, they weren't really that stressed about it. They thought maybe, you know, this man being as experienced as he is, perhaps he found a cave and he is crashing out there for the night. But first thing the next morning, they did still launch a search. And that search continued for several weeks. They not only had hundreds of people searching the entire area, but they also had helicopters out and bloodhounds, and they just never found a trace of Robert. Now, here's where it gets even weirder. 
full, well, slightly over a full year later, uh, October of 2005. Another hunter is out alone in the woods, um, and he starts to become aware that a crow has been screeching for a while, and the screeching seems to get more incessant, and he can't shake this feeling that it's, like, calling him. This is what he has said about this. He can't shake the feeling that it's calling him, so, and as soon as he has that, like, thought actually form in his brain, he can't shake it, and he immediately is just, like, compelled to look for this crow. So he follows the screeching, and he sees through the trees that there's a clearing, and in the clearing he can see this stump of a, basically a broken tree. And it's a pretty tall stump, and on the top of the stump he sees this crow that's just been screeching this whole time. And it's almost like as soon as he notices the crow and like gets a little bit closer, the crow notices him, turns, looks at him, and immediately stops cawing and just stares at him. And he starts getting really uncomfortable. It's very unnerving and it also seems to kind of confirm the feeling he'd initially had that the crow had been calling out to him. So he steps into the clearing and still making eye contact with this crow. The crow has still not gone back to screeching, hasn't made a move to fly away, is just staring at him. As soon as he gets into the clearing fully, the crow looks down and he follows the gaze of the crow and at the base of the stump there's a human skull. Naturally, this freaks him out. The whole situation was really uncomfortable. So he leaves. He makes a note of where he was, of course, leaves, goes, gets authorities, and they come out immediately and they find the skull. But not only do they find this human skull, they also find lined up next to it. There's a human skull, there's a human femur bone, two boots side by side just placed there, a coiled up belt next to the boots, and a balled up jacket, and inside the balled up jacket was a wallet. And the wallet had money, credit cards, all of that, and Robert Springfield's ID card. They searched the area, never found anything else. At first, the FBI officially announced that Robert had probably been shot. I guess, you know, by another hunter, I don't know. Um, but later on, they came out and said no, it hadn't been foul play, that he had most likely been hit by a falling tree. Maybe even the tree that his skull had been found next to. But if this is the case, it doesn't really explain why all of his things, well not even all of his things, they never found his bow and arrows, um, but it doesn't explain why they'd all be just like lined up all neat there. Um, it, it also doesn't really explain now if Robert had, say, been attacked by an animal. His sons were just up the canyon, and if you've ever been hiking in a canyon, you know sound echoes. If he had been attacked by something, his sons would have heard him call out if he had been attacked by a human. Surely they would have taken at least the cash in his wallet. Um, and why would they have left his stuff neatly? You know, there's just too many weird questions. And if he wasn't attacked by anything, if he just died of natural causes, like the FBI says, officially has stated his cause of death, uh, that also, it's, why would his clothes, like, no. I don't know. I'm not buying it. I don't personally buy it. The whole situation is super weird, and I want to talk about what stuck out to me the most about this story. Crows are scavengers. 
And as scavengers, they are in any culture pretty much around the world that has crows that live in their region. Uh, crows are associated with death. Not only death, but rebirth as well. And we can get into all of that, but that's kind of another topic. But crows being associated with death also connects them to the underworld. It also connects them to the divine in a way, right? So when we think of the afterlife, most people, whatever your depiction of the afterlife is, the divine is in some way associated with it. And so these are the main associations of crows, as well as ravens, but we're talking about crows right now. So something that I think is really interesting, and if you saw my last video on uh, fairies and the dead, um, fairies in a lot of folk tales have themselves been seen as ghosts or spirits of the dead. And in some cases, not spirits of the dead that have ever lived in corporeal form in this world. Um, some cases they have some, they're just some other kind of entity, right? And so this association between crows and the dead and the missing 411 and some of the things, some of these people that go missing, go missing in places that are very heavily associated with the underworld and have been since the beginning of humanity, right? Um, and I do find it incredibly interesting that a crow, not only with all these associations of death and the underworld and being messengers from the other realms, right? Spirit messengers, essentially. A crow is what led this other hunter to find Robert's body. And something that is really interesting to me, well, I guess not even his entire body, but something else that is really interesting to me in all this is that Robert, his skull was initially found, finally found, in a region that had been searched multiple times the whole year before. So where was he during all that time that dogs were sniffing out the area and hundreds of people were combing it for any trace of him? Where was he? I personally have a lot of theories about all this stuff. I'm really curious what you guys' theories are. If you have theories about any of this, if you've ever heard of any of these cases that have made you think about things in a different way. But do think about the fact that it was, aside from all these other associations that I just mentioned, they were hunting on a crow reservation. And they were crow natives themselves. Robert was a crow native. So was it maybe his spirit trying to show someone where he was? Was it, you know, did he disappear? Did he go to fairy? There's so many stories of people going, like getting lost in the wild and ending up in some other realm. Does, is that what's going on with these people that go missing for so long and then we don't see any trace of them? And when we do, it's like something has just been neatly left there. It's like, oh, here you go. Here's what's left. What about all these stories of when people find these other realms, time is different. I talk about this some in my last video about fairies and the missing 411, but this is something that is seriously so interesting to me is the time loss. If you look at these old fairy stories, people can go to fairy and then when they come back to the human world, sometimes years and years have passed. Sometimes it's only been a few minutes. It's wonky. That's all I'm saying. And I think it's really interesting stuff to think about. And like I said, I really want to hear you guys' opinions about all this. What do you think? What do you think is going on? What are your theories? Do you have theories? Is this all just weird? Do you think the hunter was making this all up? What do you think? Let me know. And uh, stick around if you like this kind of thing. Like, share, subscribe. Like I said, this is going to be a new series. So I can't wait to talk with y'all about these things. And I'll be back soon with another case.